hundreds of millions of Africans were stolen from Africa. They were taken across the ocean. They were forced to walk in bad conditions across Asia, Europe and America. The slave trade in Africa was a terrible experience. But I am here to talk about the slave route in Badagri, Lagos, Nigeria. Journey with me as we journey to Badagri to know more about our history on slave trade. But first, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Blazing Things. Like and tell us in the comment section what you feel about this tragic history. Um, this is the senator of the man that owns the compound. If you get to Aito Roundabout Tiwa, you see the statue of this man standing at the roundabout. He founded it in 1902 for the replacement of Egbado, victim of war. He was caught as a slave boy when he was attended at the age of six by Dahomey, slave raider. The Republic of Dahomey was changed to Benin in 1975. Maybe it began to Kotonu, Ajashe, and the name that his family gave to him, we call it Ifade Milekun was his party. But today, how comes the name came to be Seriki Williams? About, what's the name? About you are Yoruba man, right? I got to know that through your name. You see, we Africans, our name tells story, is story called directory. Somebody can look it. Somebody can say you are from some part of the world through your name. But slaves have no name. Slaves bear their master's name. The first master that owns him as a slave, named Abbas, a black man who lived in the Republic of Dahomey, but he later resold him to a white man who took him down to Brazil. William taught him how to read and write, but later freed him. It was William, the second master, that built this compound in the 1840s. In 1895, he became the Seriki Muslim of Badabi Because slaves should be their masters, now. that's why he chose to be the name of the two masters. That's why we call it Seriki William Abbas. But his bad name for some time disappeared. But later, he started adding to most of his document his real name, Ifa Remilepo. And the world knows this company as Brazilian Baracoon. And the reason why they call this company Brazilian Baracoon, most of the slaves think of this company were taken to Brazil. And they were Yoruba origin. And it goes along with their culture and tradition. And up to today, if you get to Brazil, there's a god among the Yorubas here called Yemeja. In Brazil, they call it Lemeja. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Mamid. And Barakun is a Portuguese word because it was the Portuguese that started the trade. We call it Trans-Atlantic Slave Trade, which began around 16th or 15th century by a man called Prince Henry, navigator of Portugal. And it ended in Africa 1870, and that will give you 400 years in slavery. Now, Barakun means cell, dungeon, or store where the slavery had been store them. We have total number of 40 rooms in the compound today. But out of the 40 rooms, the government said the family of the man that were present living in the compound today should return to sell. That will be privileged to see soon. But before we go in, we're going to, let's turn around. Now, when the European came to Africa, look at this. That, that, this thing is called Cowrie shell. Cowrie. Yeah. Okay. Cowrie shell, like when they came, they say they can do business with our forefather with this kind of money. That they prepare to do trade by butter. Do that butter means 
exchange goods for goods. Now, this is some European product that we use in exchange for the slave. European will give our father a slamibo in exchange for 10 human beings. 10 human beings? As a slave. Wow. Mirror and beings. You can say two slaves, I can say three. We call it bargain power. One umbrella go for 40 human beings as a slave. A bottle of whiskey go for 10 human beings as a slave. Hold on. This is the original bottle? No, the original bottle is inside. inside. Yeah, okay. this one is just a replicant. Okay, right. The okay. bottle. The mm -hmm. bottle of it is a replicant container. Yeah, you see it inside. Okay. Now, the kettle was given to the man that owned the compound. When he became the Seriki Muslim Badaj, when they want to top ban him as Seriki, or I mean crown him as Seriki, this kettle was given to by the Europeans that had made the trade, and the Bradis was given to him by the Brazilians that were doing the trade. And that iron bar that we call it cannon gun. The long cannon gun go for 100 slaves. The short one, 40 slaves. The Europeans give you a den gun to give them 40 what? human beings. A den, den gun. A den. Den gun, den. You back call it Ibon Shakabula. Ibon Shakabula. Yeah, go for 40 human beings as a slave. Now, look at this figure. In the year since the 1840s, when the compound was being established. Now, right from here, out of the 40 rooms that we have in the compound today, 38 rooms were being occupied by the family of the father of the that owns the compound. Now, let's see the two, the government said the family should set aside and see what the family does. Look at these two separate chains. Used to be one chain in those days, but because of the age, it's are divided. We call this chain waist chain, and it's so heavy. And this chain should be about 20 or 20 to 30 kg. It's very, very heavy. We call it what waist chain. And they use it to, they will try to, like this picture now, they will try to run the waist of a stubborn slave just to calm the slave down so that he will be less aggressive. This one is called ankle shackle. Before they put the slave in the vo under the, vo the voyage, let's see. Okay, they put this at the ankle. My ankle, then the second one, then this straight rod will be passed from here to here. And they will now lock it with their padlock and they will start the slave down, the hand will be tired at the back. And this thing was made of metal, there's no how, it will always put wounds around the ankle of the slaves. Who okay. care? Because they were slaves, the Nezi, they will still wear this on their necks. We call it cobbling yoke or ankle shaka. And look at this umbrella, this is a lovely umbrella for 40 human beings. Wow, for 40 human beings? Yes, the umbrella too, What's so heavy as you can see here the sound that should I say heavy it was made of wood bronze silk and cane let me show the cane you can see the cane and as heavy as this umbrella is as in this picture a slave had to carry it on the head of the masters and it must not drop if the umbrella drop from the hand of the slaves they will be headed the slaves because slaves were property and with their property they believe they can do anything with their property okay now Look at this item number seven here. We call it iron drilling bit. They put this inside the fire to write the name of the owner of the slaves on the checks or at the back. We call it brandy. They branded the women at their back because of their breasts. If you're a man, they write the name of the owner at the checks. Or sometimes they also used to powerfully to pierce the upper lift of the slave and lower lift of the slave and put palo because they were fed only once in a day. And the reason why they don't give them too much of food, Europeans believe that if the slave were well fed, they have a power, that stamina to fight their master or they use that thing called iron muzzle to guard the mount of the slaves. This is the picture of the man that owns the company, Seriki Williams about the one I will tell you the story outside that he was captured when he was at the tender age of six. Each of this holding this ceramic bowl go for 10, 10 human beings as I say. It doesn't matter the size. Once the European give you one of these, you give them 10 human beings as I that to say this is a 50 human being you are seeing in here. Now, this has, these are the gifts given to the man by the European, I mean the Seriki, the jog, or the kettle given to him by the European when he became the Seriki, when they want to top on him, they gave him as a dash. And some of the money I showed outside, then the bread is given to him by the Brazilian 
Then if you look closely at the body of this bottle, you will see a thin semblance to be big customized on the very body of the bottle. That's 10 human beings standing. So European give you one bottle of gin or whiskey, you give them 10 human beings as a slave. Then that round object, we call them record. They call the gin gramophone in those days. They use them to wind it. But today, we do DVD and see that. We didn't know how many slaves that were used in a chain for that records. These three clay pots were originally made from Yoruba's land. The first pot, you know the Muslim, while doing their prayer, they wash their face, leg and coat. We call it ablution. So if Sirki Abbas wants to take his bed or do his prayer, this way they used to store his water for ablution, soup, pot, then the drinking jar or pot. This is drinking pot. So now, look at that small window up there. Or let me say the room should be nine by nine in size. In size. Now, if you look up, you know, notice that the ceiling they use bamboo for the ceiling. But that time it's not the bamboo. They use a the clay, a stick. Look at this. Look at my hand. You know, they did a the clay on top. Like when you when you did a decking. Like a form of roof. A hand, like a decking. You know, decking at the hand. Where they use a the cement to do the hand, but they use a the clay then okay, to so do the now. decking. So and also the reason why they use clay. Later, I'll be showing the iron corrugated sheet that is very really thick. So that when sunshine comes, so that there will not be too much heat. Show you what, that's why they have to do the, put the clay. So they use it on the top with a, with a heavy wood. So that the slave will not be able to escape. Because if you see where bamboo then, it's very easier for them to escape through the roofing. Now, that triangular shape of window over there, that's what we provided the ventilation. So imagine 40 able human beings in here are waiting the slave ship for three to four months and they'll still lock this door and they'll be here for three to four months awaiting the slave ship this is where they pee, pull, do a lot of things imagine the odor, the heat imagine how many human because they would have died here that's the reason why when people come around here I tell them you guys are not here to catch from but just to feel the pain the people the past have felt how many slaves do you say are inside here? 40 human beings inside here number nine they'll be here for three to four months awaiting the Right now, we are going out to see the second cell. Um, we call this thing a local mannequin or mannequin or a dummy. This clothing on this local mannequin is over 200 years of age. It was given to the Siriki Abbas by Brazilian friends that they are doing the trade. And look at this picture here. Those two guys, they were slave raiders. They want to capture the old man as a slave. The man took knife and stabbed himself to death. Now, a lot of things happened during the era of the slave trade. Most of the, because the slaves were taken to different parts of the world. Like most of the Igbo slaves, taken from Calabar and Bonipo, they took them down to Georgia. One day, over 75 of the Igbo slaves said over their dead body to be a slave in another man's land. We call the place Ibo Landing up today in St. Simon Island in Edoba Creek. They killed their masters and 75 of them held their hands together like this. They walked into the Atlantic Ocean and drowned themselves that they would never be a slave in another man's land. Now, if they escape, these are called killer's dogs to trace anyone away. If you have watched the thing called Django, you understand what I'm talking about. About 20 dogs will go for one man and they will piece the slave to pieces. Any slave that refused to accept the master's name will be struck to death. Now, there's a thing called the root by Alice Alice, Kunta Kunte. The guy African names, they gave him Kunta Kunte, was his African name. The master that owns him wanted to give him to me. The guy said, no, I'm Kunta Kunte. I'm from Africa. It was either seven or eight generation of Alice Ali traced their root for United States, United, States, United States of America down to Gambia where the guy was captured as his, and they made that beautiful movie called The Road. That's why when people come to the tenant, please, let's give our children our name. There's nothing ever wrong with our name because our name have a direction where we really come from. You have asked all this clothing at shop at two, owned by Sidi Kebaz. It's over 200 years of age as well. Now look at this Asian box. We call it Mark box. You have call it Akboti Shano. So this man's boss, we didn't know how many slaves that were used in the thing for the best. This is your city care about how many kept most of his documents. And this is the bricks that we use to build this compound. We call it bond bricks. Now, let me bring the iron and cover it. 
Look at this iron here. This is the iron corrugated sheet. You can hear the sound of it. That shows that it's very, very heavy. And what we produce now, you get 15 of it out of this heavy zinc. Thank you. We call this thing a gallo. They normally mount the gallo in the plantation where the slaves used to work. If any slave that tried to be too smarter than your master, you will be hung on gallo. They will tie the chain down the ribs of the men, the hand at the back, you may turn up and they will be hung on gallo, dying gradually. They are just trying to instill him here into other slaves and they will not last for a day till they are dead. And this is the revolt that took place in Dominica Republic when the slaves were being led by a man called Tuzent, Lovetius of Haiti. They killed all the whites in Haiti, they let her go their independence. But after many years back, the French, we are the ones that enslaved them, they came back to them that they should pay damages. We call it reparation. And they forced them to borrow money from their banks. And some say the reason why Haitians were still poor today, they were still paying what is known as a reparation to French colony. And the reason why I just have to believe that most of the colony that the French colonized today, they are still paying what is known as colonial taxes to them up till date. And when some group known as abolitionists put salt to the trade, the slaves over there were end, we are jubilating for freedom. And there's nothing so beautiful to be a free man. The family of Siriki Abbas wrote this apology letter that they are very, very sorry for what their forefathers have done to mankind, as you can see. The reason why we are here, we are here to create history. We'll be working on the same routes that slave war for many years, hundred years, precisely. Now, they call this island Berefu Island. Berefu means dry land. Berefu Island. A desolate land, a land that nobody leaves during the era of the slavery. But today, we have like three villages on this island. We have the Badagri guys that lives here. Then we have some brother and sister from Odo State. We call them Ilaje. Their main occupation is the fish on the Atlantic Ocean. Then we also have some brother from Togo and Ghana. We call that play Yovo Yon. So those are the three types of the villages we have on this island today. But that time, nobody lives here. If you are found here, you are a slave. Now, they say this is the route of the journey to unknown destination. Why do they call it unknown destination? Because the slaves don't even know if there's any country called Europe or America. They don't even know where they're taking them to. So we'll be walking on the same route to the point of no return. Now let's create history by walking to the point of no return. Though we will return because we are not slaves. You can feel that chain that I put on my neck. The chain is so heavy and I'm thinking that chain should be about 25 to 30 kg. It's so heavy. So just imagine putting that kind of chain on human beings neck and they will be dragged on this part in a single fight to the point of no return. I'm a kind of person that believes that. I vividly believe in reparation most giving to Africans. You understand? Most especially those that they forced away as a slave. There must be a kind of reparation for them. You understand? Because majority of them don't even know where they really come from. Because I used to tell you that Africa is the root. But Africa have the roots have the branches. Which branches are they from? Because our name tells story, a story all directly. Somebody can locate you through your name. 
Like now, if I tell that, if I tell that I'm Kofi, can you tell me where I come from? I can tell you that I come from Ghana. You see, our name is like a Google map. There's nothing wrong with our name. Some pastors will come up and tell you that the reason why you are not prospering because it's of our name. We Africans, we should stop giving our children foreign name because why am I saying this? Sometimes they might got lost. And if the only thing they could remember is that name, that name will always bring them back to their roots. To their... So just that's why the Odyssey said, if you want to destroy a man, take away his name. His name. This well was dug by the African ship. Why did they have to dug this well? We call the slave ship a cargo ship. A cargo ship could take like 600, 700, 300, 200, depend the size of the slave ship. And the crew, they were taking hundreds of slaves away. There are no more than 25 to 30 people that were taking the slaves away in chains. So most of the time, if the slaves spotted the land, it aggravated them. They will kill all the crew on board. They will add the sailor to sail to any available land. And the slave will now occupy the land. Now, the African chiefs now came up with a, what can they do so that the slave will be less aggressive. That's why they have to do it this way. I'm still coming back to this. Now, the next neighboring country in Wida, that's Benin Republic, their own is a tree of forg uh, forgiveness, forget a tree of memory loss, rather. You understand? A tree of memory loss. So, in Benin Republic, a tree like this, that T R W E tree of memory loss. The women will go around the tree seven times. The men nine times, and they will forget everything. But it's not for life, for just for trip, for, for so that they will have a very safe trip. Ironically, some say this water is still affected. Some say it's not affected, but we don't know how true is it because we never see a single soul who say, "Okay, let me try." If I'm going to lose my memory. So are, are you saying if, if I, if I um, take from this water and I drink it, I'll, I'll lose my memory? Well, that word, them say. So it's just a fallacy. Africa, there's nothing fallacy in Africa. I can't stay, take this water because this is Africa. The power might still be there. You can see, you understand? Because you never can tell. You understand? So after giving them the water, they will now move them to the point of no return. Some call it memory loss well. Some call it slave attenuations. Well, so um, this is the point of no return. Only God knows how many blacks been dragged on this route across the Atlantic Ocean to Europe and America. The trade started by the Portuguese in the 15th century, precisely 1625, around 1625, and it ended Africa 1870. The first thing is known as Trans-Sahara Slave Trade, started by the Arabs, whereby they invaded Africa, they forced the people away as a slave. Then later, the Europeans came up with Trans-Atlantic Slave Trade, or Triangular Slave Trade, and the Portuguese started the trade by a man called Prince Henry, the navigator of Portugal, and whereby most of the slaves were being taken from Africa to Lisbon, where other countries, they have to go to Lisbon in Portugal to get their slaves. But immediately they discover America, when the European discovered America, they started moving the slaves to America. Then later, the English joined. What used to be here is those two erected pole over there, that long one, the one that has hold on top, then the other one there. The slaves, once they move, then they'll pass under the arc of the pack shop. They will arrange them along the waterfront because, you know, they spent three to four months in the barracoon, inside the cells. You know, imagine somebody staying in a, in a cell for dunking away without putting water on their body, so they are stinking. So, they will use their bucket, they fed the salty water, they will splash on their body, they wash them. After washing them, they will now start putting them inside the slave ship. Most of the slaves are the upper deck. When they pee 
and we we or the pool everything we settle at the bottom so majority of the slave at the bottom who got sick european believe that any sick slave no not really they will sick but they believe a sick slave will affect the elder one so they have the, the slave will be dumped inside the atlantic ocean or sometime while they are going away if they storm hurricane or storm on the water for the balancing of the slave sheet, they have to draw some slave alive so that the boat will be able to balance and according to unesco about 25 to 30 million blacks will be taken away as a slave. There are only a few of them that made the journey. That is to say, the majority of them found themselves at the bottom of the ocean. I'm an educator and I run the educational program uh, here. And my, uh, my organization is called Why Blue Sky. The uh, name is taken from this because some, at some points you have the blue sky above your head. And this is what children ask about. They want to know a lot of things. For example, where your ancestor come from and why is the sky blue? So when I'm here uh, on the educational purpose, I also travel and try to get to know as much as possible about this country. I like the, the, the culture. I travel to Benin City, for example. I like the, and I keep finger crossed for Benin bronzes come back to Nigeria. So it was no other way than to come to Badagri to see this kind of the very sad history. It's not the part, a part of my history because I'm, not, I'm from Poland, so we had nothing with this trait. Uh, but it's the humankind history, so even if you are from the other side of the world, you have to know about it, right? To avoid the situations like this in the future. This is our story, a story that changed our lives, an experience that was said with tears. We were made to eat roots instead of food. They were dressed in chains, but we never divided. They kept the brotherhood going in and in a man's land. <sighs> what a great bond that was. Our fathers and mothers were made subjects made to complement their perfection. We were the blacks that were enslaved. The black spirit still lives in us. In rags, we were strong. In rags, we were together. In rags, we cherished the black spirit, the black spirit of Africa us who we are. We taught their youngsters. We trained their children. We helped their children. In pains, we took the motherly position. Grew old in another world. We became aged. The white tasted the African breast milk. We were caring and have always been. Just homeless.